just like in uh, in bold, it's like, you know what, we we had an appointment at 1030 and it's it's 1030. So uh, without without further ado, Jenny, again, I appreciate you bringing the meat this week and uh, and blessing blessing me and the folks who join in with with a word. And like I said, it, it doesn't matter whatever's on your heart. You can talk about whatever. And I can assure you we're going to uh, we're going to get a nugget or two from it. So, man, the floor is yours. Oh, my gosh. Well, I am so excited to be here. I am uh, blessed and honored because actually by me sharing with you guys is allowing me to live my personal mission, which is to give back and empower my agent friends and help you discover your possibilities and tap into your own potential uh, just through the teachings and the lessons that I've learned and by modeling how to do this business and have some fun at the same time. And while really helping you discover that it's cool to go ahead and live your life now, there is no need to wait. So thank you for having me. I'm Jenny Wallach out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've been in real estate for 21 years now, and I've learned a lot. Like many of you guys, if you have been in this business for even a couple of years, you know that Every day is a new day. The clients are new. The, the technology can be new. And there's always something to learn, which is why I absolutely love this business. And like Ben said, there is no reason to really get out of real estate. You get to just evolve into living your ideal job description. I have a business coach. I've had a MAPS coach since 2011. And he really talks with us about this all the time. It's like, why are we waiting to live our best life? And why not build your ideal job description for what you see yourself doing in this world of real estate and start building your life toward that? So how can you have that exit strategy where you're still uh, inside of this world that is so fabulous? Well, I have... Uh, like I said, been in the business for a long time. I've learned a lot. And what I've also learned is that um, this business can eat you up. It's been really interesting over the past couple of years. We got to really tap into our true selves and what makes us tick in, you know, just a pandemic. And so we got to evolve and change and maybe grow. Uh, maybe you had some of the best years in, you, you've ever had in real estate. I know we did here in Tulsa. I have a small and mighty team. We helped 192 families last year, and that's a lot of families. And uh, our average sales price luckily has gone up with the past couple of years, but we're still just right around that $250,000 price point for our MLS. Our team price is, price is a little bit higher, and that's just from being in the business for a really long time and having systems around touching our database and staying in connection with our people. So I thought I'd talk with you guys about some of the lessons I've learned because I've actually created classes around all these ideas because I love sharing with you guys, like I said. So I've realized that my life is about living your passion, loving your people, and leveraging your life. And so if those are different categories for today's purposes, and we tap into like, how do you live your passion? How do you even know your mission? Well, there's this red book that we've all probably read called The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. And Gary Keller talks about just tapping into your big why and that successful people know where, what their big why is. And to be honest, for years and years and years, I struggled. I had no clue. Nothing was motivating me enough to get my butt out of bed and pick up the phone and talk to people that I didn't know. And so a coach asked me this question in a different way, rather than what's your big why, which to me, I associated with why do I earn money? Why do I lead generate? Why do I help people buy and sell houses to instead, he asked me this $50 million question. And with this question, it was really simple. You guys can imagine it with me if you'd like. If you had $50 million in the bank right now, yeah, feels good. And then all of your debts are paid. You've invested in many areas of, of um, whether it's investments or rental properties. You have traveled the world. You've purchased all the monetary items you've ever, ever, ever dreamt of. Your family is happy and healthy. You give back to your community, and you're just really, really living your dream life. Then tomorrow, 
when you wake up, what do you do? And see, he asked me that question. And that next morning, we were at Masterminds at Amelia Island years and years ago. And I remember waking up that next morning earlier than I ever woke up. I wasn't an early riser back then. I started journaling immediately. And I wasn't a great at the habit of journaling. And I just wrote down what I would do if I didn't think about lead generating as why do I earn money, but instead what's in my heart that I love that I would do even if I wasn't paid to do it. And that was it. That was a defining moment for me. I had this huge aha that, and it doesn't have to be life-changing for you guys, whatever you come up with, but what it helped me see is that the efforts of today, me picking up the phone and talking with people or me meeting with people or, or connecting with people, because that's our job, was just allowing me to live my purpose. And my purpose is to empower and give back to others through all the lessons I've learned. And I only get to do that if I show up and I model and I be the kind of real estate agent and person that people would want to be like. And so that was a huge lesson for me. So everything that I teach, anytime that I talk, I'm going to always start with, how's your mindset? How are you thinking? about yourself and your purpose? And then how are you applying that to your business? Because once you start seeing that, man, and whatever yours is, it doesn't have to be big. It can be just yours. Whatever is in your heart that you love to do and you apply it to your business, then you have joy around lead generating. You see the results. You know that when I help somebody buy and sell a house, that affords me the opportunity to give back to my community or whatever your thing in your heart was. Maybe it's giving back to family or building a legacy for them on going on family vacations, but you start attaching that to your business. And that's when it gets fun. And that's when this business, the grind of it every day that can be so painful, the ups and the downs, sometimes in the same 30 minutes, can you can push through those when you see that there's something greater. So that's where I always love sharing, you know, with you guys is where are you on your path of figuring all this stuff out? It can be big and daunting and scary, or you can apply some simple little steps. I love teaching. So you guys know, I, um, I have many uh, videos on my YouTube blog. It's called your journey with Jenny. If you ever want to go check it out, I have lots of resources and things that I've learned over the years. So the other part is live, I'm sorry, love your people. So for today's purposes, loving your people would be your team. If you have others around you, this could be your co-op partners. This could be your, this is mainly your database. Because when I got really clear that the number of people in my met database equaled times a percentage and my return on investment of my database equaled a number. And I was able to help that many families each year. So whenever we're getting right here to the end of 2022 already, which is crazy, you're going to start doing your business planning. And I don't know about you guys, but this is how I used to live. What do you want to do next year? How many, how many deals you want to do? How many families you want to help? I don't know. Well, I did this many last year, so I should at least put that down as my goal. Well, what kind of goal is that? It wasn't based on any kind of logic or math. And I have discovered I really like math, surprisingly. And the math for me is something that I've discovered is the return on my database is 5%. Now, I told you I have a really smart maths coach. His name's Jordan Freed. If you guys ever get the opportunity, you should tap into all his teachings. But he was sharing with me from all of his coaching and all the big teams that he teaches that he's seeing that a 5% return on your database. So take your METs times 5%. That's the number of families you should be able to help that they come back and be a client again. They share a referral with you. Or it could be that you're a 10% return on your database, which is great. Or maybe 15% return on your database, which is amazing. Well, see, Jenny here just thought that she was for sure a 10%. I'm at least great at my database. And then I did some investigating and I went back on last year's numbers and I discovered we're just 5%. We are just 5%. Well, there's clarity is power with that, right? So either we grow our met database 
to get to have more families from that 5% or we need to up the touches that we're doing with our people and in generating more referrals and repeat clients from them. So there's always opportunity. So I'm sharing that with you as just a little lesson that I learned. Get clear on what your number is. So what I discovered was this year, yep, we're on track for that again. I'm crunching out the math. I'm looking at the number of families we've already helped from a database, those that are under contract, and we are right on track again. So I told my coach, and I don't know about you, but a coach really likes to, to be told this by their client. I said, man, you're really smart. And so that's been our mission now. The rest of the year, all we're going to focus on are two things. The number of listings that we take and the number of people that are in our MET database. So for me, guys, a MET is somebody that you've had a two-way relationship about real estate. It doesn't have to be a client. It can be a colleague, a friend and volunteer person, um, anybody that you've ever met and you know know each other, you have met each other. And then you apply the loving on your people part is all about you applying a touch program to them so that they don't forget about you and you don't forget about them because it's our job to remember them. It's not their job to remember us. So we must continue to stay in touch with them in all the forms of communication. I don't know about you guys. I am, um, well, I'm more on Facebook, but maybe our people are more on Instagram or maybe they never, ever respond to me through email, sometimes through text. I mean, you got to figure out how your people want to hear from you. And so that's what's been fun over these years of growing a team and leveraging my life with people and technology and tools. Because now guys, we've got this, these amazing tools, whether you use command or any other CRM, you know that you can set up these plans that remind you to communicate, but then also that it can auto drip on people. Now, I hate that word, that sounds terrible, but it's reminders that, so what I realized is that we have our agents who have this pipeline of leads and referrals that have all been put into their tasks every day. And it can get overwhelming with the repeat, you know, repetition of it. And so we thought, now, how can we improve on this? How can we make the agent's lives better and instead get people to opt in and want to hear from us? So now we're applying some touches to our plan. That would be the agent's responsible for a phone call. And then the team helps out by having, and like I said, we have three cyber backers. We have three virtual assistants that are amazing and very affordable and highly talented and trained that are pushing out texts or emails that look like they're coming from our agents. And so what then can automatically be happening at the same time? So these are the things to start building out for 2023 is what does my touch system even look like? How many times do I communicate with my people and then build it from there? So another thing I want to share with you that's a tactical piece is there's this thing inside of the millionaire real estate agent called the economic model. And uh, there has been shared with me in the past, this spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet is so beautiful because up at the top, and it, it kind of looks like the spreadsheet, it kind of looks like something you've seen in bold. And that was the listings needed at all time form. So if you've ever taken bold, what you do is you crunch out the math and there's percentages. And this is where knowing your numbers really matter. You crunch it down and you see like, wow. So to help for us, for example, I've got mine right here. For us to help 190 families this year, then that means based on our average sales price, and I can share this form with you, Ben, if you want to pass it on to everybody else, um, then it just crunches you down to how many listings buyer and seller listings, because we are real purposeful about signing buyer broker agreements, which is an, a listing agreement with a buyer. We're really purposeful about focusing on how many listings we must take. So finishing the year, I know how many listings we must take, we must take each month. Now we call this our locker combination. So we see that our locker combination for our team is, and this is how, why you should know yours, is eight, 11, and 18. Eight seller listings taken each month, 11 buyer listings taken each month, and 18 pendings because that has some fallout to get to our 16 closed. 
have we hit this all year long? No, this year has been very interesting is what I must say. And we know though that luckily we'll be saved by the higher sales price, but we're not gonna count on that again next year. We're gonna get off the hook this year because our units are gonna be down and so are everyone else's. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And so let's focus on the things we can control. And so for that is the number of people we talk to, the leads that we receive, and then the listings that we take that allow us to get to the families that we choose to serve. So that would be then the leveraging your database and loving on your people. The other leverage that you can add into your business and your life would be through technology and through people. People systems and tools are really what it's all about. And so if you desire a little bit more in your life, it's up to you, but adding in some help can really change everything. See, back for me in 2011 is when, I'm sorry, 2010, I took bold for the very first time. And I had a little one, her name's Mia. Now she's 15 and as tall as me. But back then she was three, four years old. And I was taking bold for this first time. My brain was exploding with this like, oh my gosh, is this possible for me? I'd never dreamt that big or imagined my life looking like that. And that was all it took was me seeing that I could do it. I have the potential. And now I had the tools because this bold class offered up the scripts, the tools, the technologies, the, the tips and tricks that I needed in order to grow my business. And so from that year in 2010, I'd helped 23 families all by myself, solo agent. And the next year I helped 51 families and then 61 families and then new one families. And then quickly I learned I need help because I was a mess. I got to this point of burnout, of breakdown, of not liking people. And I realized, oh, wait, this isn't the kind of business that you can get away with not liking people. Because if you don't lead generate, you don't get to help anybody buy or sell houses. And so those were the years that I was struggling with my own why and the crazy of this business. And ever since, I've been on a huge, huge push to make sure that you guys don't do what I did. Don't get to the point of burn, burnout and breakdown that you hate people. I don't want you to ever get there. And that's why I have learned and evolved that my business now is sharing with you guys the lessons that I've learned and the classes that I teach and and giving back all the all the things and so, um, you know, the the part that I'd add in about our database that I think is really important. The cool thing is our company has so many amazing uh, tools and classes that we already have at our disposal. But sometimes we get overwhelmed with it all that we just shut down and and don't tap into any of it. Well, um, for one thing, there's this thing called the um, the database model. What is it? Uh, build your database. So what we're going to do, if you're going to focus on your database and four laws of lead generation is what it's called. So the four laws of lead generation, if you guys aren't at a place where your database is set up or cleaned up yet, just tap into it. It's inside of the red book and it's that you first got to just build a database. So you might be starting over from scratch. Back in 2016, my database was a huge mess. I had a coach ask me, how many Mets are in your database? And I said, um, what? So clearly I didn't know the answer. And that is the key to this business. When you have a database and you can do the math on it, as Jason Abrams says, the path is in the math. So once I got clear on the database, you, got, you guys, it's going to be you. You need to clean it up. You need to touch all those people and categorize them. Are they a Met or are they not? And then you can then get really purposeful. So you're going to build the database. You're going to feed it by adding new people to it or adding data to it. So the data could just be a phone call to Ben. How are you doing? And then I discover it's his birthday today. And I didn't know that, but now I do. So now there's data that I can add to my database so that I can make sure he gets the birthday card and the birthday text and all the good stuff. And then along with feeding your database, you have to you have to then communicate with it. 
And I love, I have a Facebook group. I don't know if the group got shared or not, but inside of my group, I recently posted our one pager. We just got really clear on all of the monthly touches and communication with our database and then what each little event looks like with a little mini GPS around it, which are the goals, the, the priorities, and the strategies. And then lastly, you service our, your database. The database wants to be in your world. And if they don't, they're going to opt out. So you know soon enough. So love on them as much as you can and squeeze all of the goodness out of them because they will if you ask. And how we service our database is this 5S model. It's from the customer experience class that I love to teach. And the 5S model would be, this is easy for you guys to write down and remember. First, you're going to set expectations for how you're going to work together with your buyer or your seller. You're going to set expectations. And then you're going to serve them. You've taken their listing or agreed to work together to help them buy a home. And you're going to do what you said you were going to do. You show up and you do your job. And then you're going to survey them, survey through the transaction. This is where you're on the same page. You're checking in. The market's a little wonky, it's changing, it's not the same as a couple months ago. So you have to have more communication now than ever before and really make sure that's time blocked on your calendar and they know when you're gonna communicate with them because they don't do this every day like you do. They need that reassurance that you got them and you're not too busy for them. And then you're gonna surpass is the fourth S, surpass their expectations. There are many times inside of a transaction that are high points and exciting ones for a buyer or a seller. That could be that you got clear to close. It could be inspections are done and they're good. That could be the appraisal is in. The Yahoo moments, that's when you could surprise and delight. Maybe you take them a little treat or surprise or a gift card and say, all right, we got this. Another step closer. So how can you stand out from everyone else and really surprise them? Then lastly, is to search, is to sustain. We want to sustain the relationship for life. I don't know about you guys, but I told you, I mean, like I'm in this for the long haul. I've done it for 21 years. I don't have a plan B. So if I've invested in these people with my time, my energy, my love, and it's been a great two-way working, working relationship and I, we, they're not jerks, then I want them to stay in our database and we want them to come to our events and we want them to show up and, and share a review with us online. So those are just some of the ways that you love on your database while you're having fun and you have repeat and referral business. Over 50% of our business comes from our database and 30% of our business come from realtor referrals, which is also a database. So you just have the same plan set up they just may be a different audience. So I know we're getting short on time and I want to leave plenty of room for any conversations or Q&As. And I'm glad Brad's still here, though. That makes me happy. I didn't bore him. Well, Jenny, I, I so <laughs> appreciate you. I would add um, real quick that um, one of, um, uh, I'd say one of uh, my valued team members is Richie, who's on this call. Richie has a company called uh, Follow-Up Results, um, okay. which is a, uh, again, I'll call it a CRM. It helps me stay in touch along with command uh, with my database. And the numbers you gave are, um, uh, we're going to our research this now because Christine and I had, uh, she, uh, uh, she gave me an update just yesterday on how many folks are, um, we've added to the database this year. I, I have to gamify things in order to yeah. keep me interested. And uh, the target this year was for me to add 400 because like you, I've, uh, I've discovered that I really like math and the numbers. And so right now we're a little off pace of gold, but I think we still have you know 90 days to hit my target by the end of December. So um, guys, know your numbers. And again, I think the path is truly in the math. And I so appreciate you sharing this. I would ask real quick, um, if you if you guys remember, I mean, the password to this Zoom is Give 2021. Because when I started my first group, it was all about giving back. 
And I know you guys give back significantly to your community. So touch briefly on what you do and what that looks like. Well, yeah, this kind of came out of that those years of being lost in, in this business and, and looking for Mark, my- We wanted to talk to you about the board meeting oh. last night. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, Sean, yeah. if you'll mute yourself, if I can't get to you real quick. No. Sorry, Jenny, go ahead. Oh, you're good. Um, you're good. So I, um, it all really started back in those days of feeling lost and what's my purpose type of years. And we had some tornadoes in Oklahoma City, which are, which is a couple hours away from us. And it, it, tornadoes hit two years and every, like two years apart and destroyed the same community for a second time. And I, I went to the University of Oklahoma, boomer. And so I, um, you know, that area is near and dear to my heart and it's our neighbors. And so I, you know, I got with my team and I said, guys, what can we do to give back to our neighbors in Oklahoma City? And we came up with what we called keys to the city. It was what we just coined as us giving back to the, the relief efforts in Oklahoma City. We said for every closing the rest of the year, it was in May, then we, um, then we, um, gave a hundred dollars. And so that went to the Salvation Army, the United Way, the food bank in that area. And, you know, when you sell a lot of houses that added up, it was like $4,000 giving back. And so we got together as a team at the, you know, planning the next year. And I said, what can we do to keep this going? Cause that felt good that we didn't barely feel that hundred bucks at all. And dang, the impact was huge. And so that's where we named it at this point, keys to the city. And what we said was, to every client that we get to help, that we will make a donation to their favorite nonprofit. And again, when you sell 200 homes, that's $20,000 that you have earmarked, that you have earmarked for giving. And that's pretty darn fun. And so now it's just a part of who we are is our giving piece as well. Now, listen, your clients, um, you can tell them it's a hundred dollars. You don't need to. You, I mean, the way I phrase it is, thank you so much for allowing us to help you with the sale of your home. You know that we love giving back to the Tulsa area and the community. We sure would love to make a donation to your favorite nonprofit. What organizations are near and dear to your heart that we may give, give to you, give on your behalf to. Now there's some magic inside of this plan though, because what we do is we send out the letter and the check to the nonprofit and have on the letterhead all our information, but we say it's the name of our client and we provide their, did I freeze? Oh no, you're good. Okay, <laughs> I was looking at everybody's face like, am I talking still? And so, um, so we put in there the client's name and their address and contact information on their behalf. Well, then the client gets a thank you letter from the nonprofit. And then we get a thank you letter. And then of course we get put on all their mailing lists because they always think that's so cool that we're giving back like that. So it really has continued to grow and grow and grow. And then the other thing is a lot of times our clients won't respond to us. Maybe they're just busy or they forget. And so instead we then just kind of earmark it and know that for different client events, we've got money that we have available. When uh, uh, hist whenever um, weather happens or, or natural disasters arise, we can give because we, that is a part of our plan. We know that money is available and that always feels so good. So every single client event that we have, whether it's a digital online opt-in or call-in or in-person or come in and get a pie, every single event has some form of giving attached to it. So either the clients can help us out by bringing canned food to the pie day because we're gonna to donate to the food bank. Or we just say for every call in, we're gonna make a donation of $5 and then we can you know, have a cap or whatever it looks like. So add this in to your business. And again, this makes you feel so good. Now, listen, we gotta tell people what we're doing and show them what we're doing. It matters to us. We're not being, uh, you know, we're honest with how we care. And so it's a part of our presentations to our buyers and our sellers. At the back of the book, it says, we love to give, give where you live. And so we then allow them to know, and we've got pictures with the nonprofits and we do videos to promote them and they just love it. They say, wow, wow, that's really cool. 
And so that's just another way that you guys can really plus the love that you give to your people. Wow, it is really cool. So I'm so glad I asked you because uh, I think, uh, again, there was just one one more nugget that you dropped on us. So uh, guys, if, if you didn't get if you didn't get something from Jenny's uh, uh, presentation today, that's a you problem. That's a you problem. <laughs> I'm just telling you straight up because she brought the meat this week and I knew she would. And I, I so appreciate you uh, joining me today and honoring this group. And guys, I, I appreciate everyone who has, uh, has honored me with 30 minutes of your time. I know that we're all busy. And uh, we've, got, we've got folks who need to hear from us, who need to be served today. So let's, let's, go, let's go do what we're charged to do, right? Let's make it a great day. Jenny, uh, unless you have something else, I so appreciate you. I look forward to seeing you again. I'm not, um, you may not be in Boston, but if not, hopefully I'll see you in Anaheim or the next you know, family okay. reunion or trip. So. Uh, Richie, you should put your phone number in there real quick, um, because again, follow up results. It's a great company. Uh, I love their information and their content. Uh, most of my clients, they really appreciate uh, receiving um, the, uh, the information. It's basically kind of another newsletter that we, uh, that we use. So um, anything else? Can I say something, I say something to yes. Jenny? Real, yeah. So, yeah. So Jenny, uh, last year I took your um, Mirror My Business workshop. Uh -huh. And uh, I just want to say that 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 workshop, I'm still using it today of all the information that I learned because I can't implement it all at once, but I can do a little bit at a time. There so, you go. Thank you for that workshop. It was really good. Hey, Dion, thank you for sharing that. And if you guys, I put in the, the chat here, I have a Facebook group. You'll have to ask to get in and I'll let you in. And that's where I'll share. I, I have, thank you. I've created different classes over the years that I just give you all my systems and all my tools. So you can just- I love it. You're, oh, thank you for saying that. That's awesome. Thank you. Guys, awesome, see, guys. We've, got, we've got a minute to go. So again, I appreciate you all. And uh, if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out and join me next week because I promise to bring the meat next week also. Okay. Love Let's it. go make it a great day. Bye guys. Thank Thanks, you. Jenny. I appreciate you. Bye. 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 Bye.